Boston plane incident just for a moment. Uh, we had a lot of different uh, texts and a lot of exchange, but I just wanted to point out to you, this text message is from, this is from Mr. Depp to you, correct? Yes, it and is. And this is on 525, the day after the Boston plane incident? That's correct. All right, and he is saying, once again, I find myself in a place of shame and regret. Of course, I am sorry. I really don't know why or what happened, but I will never do it again. I want to get better for you and for me. I must. My illness somehow crept up and grabbed me. I can't do it again. I can't live like that again. I know you can't either, and I will for both of us, starting today. I love you. Again, I'm so sorry, so sorry. I love you and feel so bad for letting you down. Do you see that? I do. And was that the message that he, that you testified to, that he gave you? Uh, yes. Okay. All right, now I'm going to jump back to where we left off. We're up in January of 2015. Um, Danish girl, you're filming in London, is that correct? Uh, yes, okay. that would have been January 2015. Okay. Now, I, uh, we heard some testimony from Isaac Baruch earlier about a telephone call, call that you had with Mr. Depp. Do you recall that call? I do. Can you well. please tell the jury and remember to tell them what Mr. Depp was saying on that call? And, and you can give the back. I didn't mean to cut you off on the context. Go ahead. Um, is it okay to... The, the nature of the conversation was yes. pleasant. Um, friendly, fine, normal. And uh, then uh, Johnny stopped making sense with this. Like, you know, he'd start a sentence and then trail off and act confused when I would, I would be confused. And um, that pattern kind of increased pretty dramatically in a short amount of time. And I was in a hotel room in London speaking to him in uh, Los Angeles. And the phone, wh what I assumed, cut off. I thought it was a connection issue. Uh, and I remember getting out of bed and walking into the bathroom to get something. And I was redialing him. And in the span of that short amount of time we had been disconnected, it was minutes, uh, not even minutes. I called him back thinking the phone had been disconnected and he answered and he said, how could, how could you tell me that? How could you say that to me? Who, who, who the fuck is he? Who the fuck is he? And he asked me that a few times and I was so confused. I, you know, I didn't understand what he was talking about. I expressed that to him. He says, who is the guy, the one in New York that you're fucking? And it, it, was, a, it was such a, a bizarre conversation because it, it had already started to feel like he... he was not make it was almost as if he was confused by what sentence he had started by the time he got to the end of it. And then all of a sudden he he tells me that I have just told him that I had a boyfriend or a lover in New York and I had he's accusing me of having just told him about it. Which was crazy to me. Not only was that not accurate, I would never have communicated with him like that. More or less called him on the phone to do it and then call him back and wonder what the connection issue was. It was just the most bizarre thing. But he was so worked up, incoherent, and accusing me of having had this conversation with him. Eventually the line drops out um, and I spoke to the person who picked up the phone. Okay. And how did that end? Um, 
I no longer spoke to Johnny. I probably can't say what the person told me. Are, are we talking about Isaac Baruch? Yes. Okay. So without saying what he said, you had a brief conversation with Mr. Baruch, and that was the end of the call? I did. Um, it was my understanding Johnny was passed Objection out. hearsay. Okay. Mrs. Steen? All right. January 25, 2015, Tokyo. Please tell, it's uh, the premiere of uh, Morde Mordecai, correct? Did you accompany Mr. Depp to Tokyo for the premiere of Mordecai? I, I did. Um, when I was... Please tell the jury about that trip. Well, I had just uh, started to pick out the wedding dress right before that trip. And plans were moving for us to get married um, shortly after this trip. So we took this trip to promote his movie. I went with him. Um, we got in an argument in the hotel room. And I, um, I said, I, I don't remember what I said to him, but I said something snotty to, to, to him to, you know, that provoked him. It provoked him. Um, and when I walked into the hallway, he grabbed me by the arm and slammed me up against the, the hallway wall. And I kind of struggled with him, tried to push him off of me. And I, I managed to get out of his grasp uh, enough to take a few steps and kind of, I kind of curved around and went into the closet. And um, by the time I made it into the closet, uh, he had me by the hair and um, what felt like he was just wailing on me, but in a really sloppy way, like hitting the back of my head and kind of wrestled me down to the floor. I, I mean, it felt to me like I didn't even have a fair shot because I wasn't even really, I wasn't facing him or looking at him. I was walking away from him. Um, or else, you know, I, I, I would have at this point even like had it, I would have tried to defend myself more, but I, I, I didn't, I, I kind of felt like it didn't see it coming and he just wrestled me down to the ground. And I remember uh, he was screaming at me. I mean, like really screaming loud. Uh, and what I remember of that is trying to get up and him kind of wrestling me back down and at one point put his knee on my back. It was kind of like kneeling on my back. And I just had this like, struggle with him. And I look at him and he's still got his glasses on. I just remember looking at him and thinking that was so I mean, he just looked like he hadn't been through anything. You know, he still had his glasses on, sunglasses. And he was screaming at me that he hated me, that it was over, he didn't want to marry me. He was disgusted. He's disgusted. He, he, he made this mistake. It was a big mistake. And everyone hated me. And I remember crying on the floor, just I, um, more than anything, I was heartbroken. I thought maybe he was serious. I thought maybe, God, he doesn't love me. Maybe this, maybe he really feels these, this way. I broke my heart. I broke my heart. I wanted to marry him so bad. I wanted, this is the man I loved, you know? Yes, it was awful at times, but I loved him and what he Objection, was saying. Objection, Your Honor, non-responsive. Yeah, overwhelmed. What he was saying to me hurt. Just as bad as anything else. I just remember that he left me on the, on the closet floor and is embarrassing or as embarrassing as it is to say I I went up to him at some point I don't know how much time had passed he was um, sitting at the piano in the living room of the hotel room that we had it's so 
I know it may be hard to understand. It's hard for me to hear myself say, but I felt, I just wanted it to stop. I wanted things to just be okay. And I just sat next to him on the piano and I just leaned my head up on his shoulder and I was, of course I was mad, of course I was mad and how it was horrible what he'd done. I, but on the other hand, I just wanted us to be okay. I could just put this other, I could put the physical stuff in a box and I just kept going back on how much I love this person. So just put my makeup on and went to the premiere with him and walked a red carpet with him and I remember in the car checking my phone obsessively for pictures because my back was my dress was backless of all times to have a backless dress. And I was just looking at my, I was looking at pictures of us on the red carpet. It was surreal because I was, I was checking for bruises and making sure that nothing, like there would be no marks on me. And we just looked like this other thing on this red carpet when it was just, It was not like that. <laughs> it's embarrassing. I know it's hard to, I'm, I'm sure it's hard to. Objection, Your Honor, I'm responsive. Right, I'll sustain the objection, next question. I'm gonna take you to February, the next month, 2015, to your wedding. <sighs> Can you please tell the jury about your wedding? So we get married in Los Angeles. I get a sense that we were just, it was a wedding running around Los Angeles. I was getting married that day and I remember running around getting, I went to therapy, and, you know, uh, got ready and Johnny and I met at the penthouses downtown and I um, wore a white dress and um, a veil, I had bobby pinned in my hair. Mm. And I walked out of that, um, Penthouse. I met up with. I met with Johnny in the hallway, and I thought he looked so handsome. And he seemed happy. And I felt that we were making the right decision. I was so looking forward to having this. I thought. We'd get married and we'd have stability, safety. So I, um, we, we get in the car, we get into actually Johnny's car and for the second time since I've known Johnny, he drove uh, himself, drove us in his truck. It was weird being in the car with him alone. You know, we didn't have that. And, and we uh, drove to his mom's house and a justice of the peace arrived, looking kind of surprised. And she married us in the living room of his mother's house, Betty Sue, with our families together. Uh, my best friend, my mom, his mom. Uh, we ate food uh, with the kids, they were there. And we had a wonderful evening and then got up and got on the plane either the next morning or the day after and flew to Johnny's Island and we had um, the what we had planned for the better you know we had planned for the better part of a year or so 
maybe eight months uh, for this uh, three-day wedding on his island uh, with our close friends, about 12 people, maybe 15 people. And we had had these uh, little houses built, like a tent, not tents, but not houses, these little, for the guests. We had them built and designed on the island, and we had people come out, and it was magic. You know, you, I was marrying the love of my life. It was complicated. But um, I thought it was the love of my life. And we had our friends and family out, and we had this three day event, um, the first of which, the uh, first night of which was supposed to be he and I separate um, with our relative party, so me with the bridal party and him with his fellas. The bridal party, we had planned to um, do a cuddle puddle, uh, have mushrooms and drink wine and, you know, have our own, like, you know, girl party separate. And then we, the next day, have the wedding festivities. We were going to be married around sunset and um, on this beach, uh, not the beach that Johnny had named for me, uh, although we I think we originally planned on having the ceremony on that beach, but it was changed at some point to the other beach, and we walked down the aisle, well, the beach aisle, and um, said our vows and the sunset behind us, and we took pictures with our family, and we shot the bird, meaning the middle finger, up at the paparazzi helicopter circling or plane circling around us while we were on the altar and we danced and celebrated and then I left the island because I had to go work when you say you left the island you had to go to work what what were you working on that required that I was filming the Danish girl in London which is the film that I had been in London for in January when Johnny was hallucinating on the, on the phone with me I was there doing kind of prep work for that film. And what, if any, film was Mr. Depp going to at that point? Well, uh, the plan, why we did the wedding when we did it is because he had always had this commitment to do uh, Pirates 5. And he was going to shoot that in Australia, and I was going to shoot the Danish girl. And I started the Danish girl um, in early February, and he was going to fly out mid-February to Australia. So uh, his movie was going to take the majority of the year, meaning until August. So um, maybe longer, so that the plan was to do it when we did it, so that we didn't have to wait until the fall of the following year. So... Shortly after I left, Johnny returned to Los Angeles and then flew from Los Angeles on to um, Australia to shoot P5, uh, P Pirates 5, excuse me. Okay. And what was the plan uh, for you when you finished with uh, Danish Girl? The plan was always for me to wrap on my movie and then come and join him in Australia where he was filming P5, P Pirates 5. Okay, and when approximately was that? That was March 3rd. M March 3rd that you wrapped, that you finished with Danish Girl? I believe, uh, I can't recall the exact date, but I believe it was around that time, yes. Okay, and then... Tell the jury, where did you fly to to get to Australia? How, how long of a turnaround was it for you to get to Australia? Uh, it was about 24 hour. I think it's about 24 hours. I could be mistaken uh, on the exact amount of time, but I remember it's quite a distance from London. I was filming in London. He was filming in Australia. Effectively, you have to fly 12 hours, stop, get on a different plane, and fly, I think, around the same amount of time if I'm not mistaken. Okay. So when you arrived, before you finished rapping with Danish Girl uh, and were heading out shortly before, what, if any, communications did you and Mr. Depp have? 
Well, at first it was, it was great. Even though we were separated, it was so hard to, it, it was so hard to um, uh, leave, the, you know, leave right after you get married, especially considering that um, in Johnny and I's relationship, it was always so much worse when I went away to work. It, it just, that's when problems started. So that was hard, but we communicated pretty consistently and it was positive until it, it started to change. Um, it, I got the sense that he thought I was, uh, sleeping with the director and then it was with the, the, the actor I was filming with. Who was the actor you were filming with? Uh, Eddie Redmayne. Okay. Uh, of course I, not of course, I was not, not that it mattered, but, um, you know, I, I could do my best to feel the accusations and then they would kind of subside and I thought things were okay. And one day, right before I'm supposed to fly to Australia, he, uh, like right, the, I think it was the night before I was supposed to leave to go to Australia, he calls my uh, hotel room, uh, apparently. I had a sense that the phone was ringing. Um, I think it was in the shower at the time, but not much time had passed and I get a knock on the door and it was someone from the hotel um, that I was staying at. The hotel staff had been sent up to the room because Johnny... Objection calls for hearsay and speculation. I'll sustain so, the objection. So don't tell what the staff said. What okay. happened next? Uh, then I start communicating with Johnny. And, and when you say started, I mean, did, were you, was he on the phone? Did you call him? What, what, what happened here? He called the room and then my cell phone and then once I was on the cell phone he was accusing me of not being in my room so he called the room and I had to prove that I was in the room because you know, by answering the phone and we had a lengthy uh, kind of circular conversation about uh, where I was and why I didn't answer the phone uh, why I didn't answer the phone immediately uh, I, he didn't sound like he was connected to reality, it just didn't seem like, it, to me, it, it seemed like a, a previous pattern. I, I was unsure what to make of it because he wasn't right in front of me, but he was accusing me of uh, what it seemed like is uh, having, I guess, an affair or a reason to not be in the room that I got a sense from him was, um, you know, cheating or, un, you know, that I was hiding something and I was why I wasn't answering the phone and hence why. Um, I got the knock on the door. Uh, that so, was right before I left. So as you're he before you headed to Australia, what, if any, requests did you make of Mr. Depp for him to get you MDMA? Um, that's ridiculous. Uh, with why, why is that ridiculous? <laughs> because um, I would never, uh, since... That time I learned my lesson the hard way on the plane to Russia, I would never do MDMA with him. That's, I, I'm asking for a problem in that case. Like that, I would never do that. Okay. So you flew to Australia and met with Mr. Depp, right? And I'm going to, uh, if, can we pull up Defendants 1809 and Your Honor, these are some of the pictures that Mr. King, you may recall, was testifying earlier, said he had on his phone, okay. and then those were given, so. Um, so I don't have these, is what you're saying. Okay, that's fine. 1809. Correct. I'm just going to show you a, a few pictures, Amber. Um, do you recognize... And I realize you didn't take this photo. I'm going to move the admission of it, though, Your Honor. Right. Any objection to 1809? No, thank you, Your Honor. All right, 1809 in evidence. You can publish. And let me pass one up and give one to the other side. We tried to, given the strangeness of this. May I approach you, Your Honor? Yes. Thank you. I appreciate it. Do you recognize this photo? I do. And could you tell the jury what this is? That is the uh, driveway leading up to the house that Johnny was renting while shooting Pirates 5. Okay. 
And then I'm going to, I'm going to make this, try to make this a little faster, and I'm going to go 18, 10. I'm going to, Ms. Bretterhoff, if you have a, a series of photos, if yes. you want to show council what they are, maybe we can get them entered all together, and then you could just yes go on with your questions. Yes, in fact. And these are all I will represent ones that we got from Mr. King. All right, if you want to take a look at them. And Your Honor, if I may just approach, I'll give you the whole stack. Okay, Please that's fine. By, by the way, I was, do you see those kangaroos in there? When I was pulling up to the house, I saw kangaroos as well. And this was a pretty big driveway. It was a pretty I I have any objection. Sorry. No, no objection to any of them? I don't believe so, Your Honor. But, but make sure you look through them all, too. I just want to make sure. Because I'll you, go Honor. ahead and read them into the record once you have looked through them all. And then... Thank you, Your Honor. I've reviewed them. I have no objection to right. any of these photographs. So we'll enter into evidence defendants 1804, 1805, 1806, 1807, 1808, 1810, 1811, 1812, 1814, 1815, 1816, 1817, 1820, 1821, 1825, 1827, 1828, 1829, 1830, 1831, 1831, 1834, 1835, 1837, 1838, 1839, 1840, 1841, and 1842. Did I get them all? I believe so. I want to make sure more than believe so. We, we agree. That's all in evidence? Okay. They're all in evidence. So as long as you're just going to be referencing those photos, we'll keep it on. We're going to keep it moving. Them. Thank you, Your Honor. Appreciate it. Okay. Uh, whose home was this in Australia? <clears throat> it was a, um, I think, like a, a, a well-known um, sports sportsman, um, racing cars or so, something of that nature. Okay. Let's, uh, Michelle, if you can pull up 1810. Is this another picture from that home? Or yes, you know, that so? looks like it's the view from the bathroom. Okay. And then let's go, Michelle, if you can pull up 1811. Is that a picture of the home? That's the house, yes. Okay. And let's go to 1812. And that's? That's the view from the um, living room. It opened into a lagoon. Okay. And then let's look at 1813. That's just a, another view, a little over of the swimming pool, correct? Yes. Okay. And then let's do one more, 1814. This is inside the house? Yes. Okay. Um, and 
if you can look to the back here where I've got my, I'm making some, what if anything is that back there? Uh, that's the kitchen. Okay, and this is the dining room and this is on the main level? What we're looking at is the, the dining room table on the main level with the kitchen in the background. Okay, thank you. Now I'm going to ask you to take this jury through your experience, what happened in Australia once you arrived there. Well, I, um, I was nervous because of the conversations that I had with him before I left. And then in, in transit, I stopped in Dubai and spoke to him too. So I was a little nervous, but he indicated me that he wanted to, me to come. He did said, I, I, I miss my wife at the end of the phone call that we had in the, um, in the airport. I called him from Dubai. And um, he, he, he said, I miss my wife. I miss my wife. I felt, okay, safe to, you know, it's good. And I, I missed him so much. You know, I, that's all I want. All I wanted to do is see my new husband. I, um, I flew in, I arrived early, uh, I immediately, I walked into the bedroom, I was so excited to, to see him, and he was so, like he had lost a ton of weight, so I just knew something was up, um, and he kind of quickly, you know, uh, Kiss me and kind of we, we had some interaction it was brief he was leaving to go work he had to work that day uh, but then uh, after he the plan was he would come back which he did in the evening and then he was supposed to have a three-day uh, weekend a long weekend so he comes back that evening and uh, the chef had kind of prepared some things uh, for the fridge mashed potatoes I think some spinach as well um, there were some steaks in the fridge, but he had kind of prepped some of the, the sides. And I was looking forward to having this kind of, you know, our style at home date. You know, we'd just been, you know, a new, we're a new married couple. We hadn't seen each other for basically a month after getting married. And uh, I start dinner and am happy to see him and at some point early in that evening he pulls out a bag of MDMA I asked him what it was and he told me it was MDMA and I was surprised because at the time that was you know like um, there was no question mark as to how I would respond to that or so I thought it's like what do you why would you even think that that's okay he had already gotten clean and sober. I was, you know, touch and go. But for the wedding, he was drinking Bex. I think at some point he did have wine on the island, but it wasn't, it, it wasn't an issue, right? Just moved ahead. So I was surprised that he would even pull out this bag and, well, frankly, not hide it from me. And he kind of seemed to suggest that we should do it together. And I was like, Absolutely not. Like, I just got here. I just got here. I want to see you. I want to spend time with you. I, it, it was the exact opposite of what I expected and what I wanted. Um, and it, it just seemed delusional at the time to me that he would even suggest this to be something that I could participate in with him. If you had been through what I had been through at that point, it, it's crazy. And at some point, um, he drinks in front of me at first, I think it was like a Malbec or a wine or something. And I remember we hadn't, like it, it's that, it kind of started the ar an argument. And that was upstairs in that room that we just looked uh, at a picture of, you know, by the sunflowers. That's more or less where we were standing, just closer to the kitchen 
and we get in an argument and I shove past him, just stomp off. And he grabs me. We have an argument about me walking away and am I walking out of this? And in my head, I was like, I, I would, I actually wasn't thinking of leaving yet, but that would later be going through my mind. We had a, a, a brief interaction and I don't, I don't remember the exact sequence of things. I wish I did. I have a lot of flashes. It gets a little bit more confusing from my ability to recall everything in a linear way a little later on as things got crazier. But for this part, the first night, what I distinctly remember is at one point, I, 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 I don't think I had gotten very far, or maybe I came back into the room, but he, when he shoved me, I went flying across these parakeet floors. I mean, just skidding across these floors. And I remember thinking it just looked so easy for him to throw me around like that, you know? I, it, it, I, I, I just slid, screeching my skin against this like beautiful wooden floor. And we had another argument that was a, a spinoff from that. It was just kind of this on off, on off sort of thing um, that I remember eventually in this interaction, he shoves me up against the fridge. Uh, he has me by the throat and he just was holding me there by my throat. And I wondered if, the, if it was the drugs, I wondered if it was him. It hadn't, in my recollection, hadn't been that long. He has me up against the throat, just kind of bashing me against the, the wall next to the fridge. We're kind of moving in that area. And at some point, I'm in his face. And he had, he, I don't know if he had let go of my neck or loosened my grip, but I remember slapping him across the face, screaming at him, screaming at me. I got my hand free when, I, when he tried to grab me when I walked off. I stormed off, I slammed the door upstairs. I don't know if it was in that instance or if it was in a later one that I eventually barricaded the, the door um, you know, I, I couldn't, it wouldn't stop him from coming in. He could come in the other doors. You know, there's plenty of, there's a back door, there's a patio, but at least I'd hear it. And my, this is March, 2015. By this time, I'm being medicated by his doctor. He's giving me anti-anxiety meds, giving me you know, had already tried to give me antidepressants. They didn't work for obvious reasons, I hope. I wasn't sleeping. I had insomnia. I'd wake up with panic attacks. My, you know, I, 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 I needed to sleep, but my ability to do so was really, really compromised at this point. And I kept thinking that um, I just wanted to hear him or know if he came in so I could be aware, so I could be ready for what was going to come in with him. And at some point I go back down stairs. I, I don't really know at what point I gave up and stayed behind my barricaded door, but I managed to go to sleep. I took some sleeping pills. I woke up and when I came downstairs, he was um, still up. Uh, he, he, told, he confirmed when I asked him that he had not slept. He had not eaten. So I tried to get him to eat. Um, we get in an argument. Uh, he was accusing me of uh, Eddie Redmayne. And uh, at, by this point, he thought I was working with Billy Bob Thornton on the movie I had just shot, but I had already worked with him a year earlier. But he was very upset about him and the gentleman that invited me to a concert in in London. You know, the, the, my co-star, he was upset about these people, even though I had done that movie a year prior. Who, who was that? Uh, at the, it was Billy Bob Thornton, Jim Sturges, and Eddie Redmayne that he was upset about. 
And let, let me just stop you for a moment. Have you seen Mr. Depp take any drugs by this point? Oh, yeah. I, sorry if I left that out. Um, the, when we had the argument about the MDMA, uh, he suggested to me that it wasn't on the no-fly list, like it, it wasn't on the no list. That was his argument. That was his defense. Like, this isn't the... You didn't say I couldn't have this. And I'm, you know, over and over again, Johnny told me I wasn't the reason he was getting sober, but I was the reason he was staying sober. I had saved his life and all this stuff. It wasn't like it was my, it wasn't my job to police him, but I kind of ended up being in that situation, it seemed like, in his mind, you know, when he would express that to me. So he took the um, a handful of pills, and I didn't count how many, but... Uh, when I came back downstairs, I did the math on the amount that was left, and I think it was either eight or ten, I can't recall as I sit here now, either eight or ten pills of MDMA. That he had taken or that, that were left? Um, I don't I remember we had a conversation about the amount that he took. So I remember saying, you, you, you took Objection here, say. Okay. I'll sustain the objection. Okay. Um, there were only a, f a few left in the in the bag, so I think it was what he took. And I I said, Johnny, that or objection hearsay. Uh, he confirmed that he took that amount and that he could take that amount. And what amount? Uh, at this point, there were ten. Uh, he had taken ten, eight or ten. I can't recall. And when you say at this point, is that the first night? Is that the second day? This is the second day. This is after I've already fallen asleep for the night in the room upstairs, come back downstairs, he was still awake. Okay, please continue with that second day. Um, he was accusing me of being mean to his sister. He was accusing me of not liking his sister. Something about the wedding. I, I, I was trying to put out that fire, as you will. I was trying to say, no, no, no. First of all, I'm not filming with Billy Bob. No, I wasn't filming, filming with Jim Sturgis. Yes, I filmed with Eddie Redmayne, but he was a lovely gentleman. I, Objection, I, I, honor, hearsay. That's not offered to prove the truth of the matter. Overruled. Thank you. Um, and then when it came up with his sister, he um, it, it, it was accusing me of, of kind of having this animosity with uh, Christy, I, I tried to defend myself, explaining why her and I had kind of become cold to one another. I don't know how else to describe it because we never had any sort of direct interaction that was negative. We never had any sort of confrontation or anything. But I did my best to explain to him uh, what, what I could answer to that accusation. And at one point he... Um, uh, oh, I mentioned that. Well, I can't say what I mentioned. He, in as a result of that phone call, picks up the phone and calls his agent. I don't know why, still to this day. Um, he calls a few people. I don't know who was on the other line. I just heard his side of it, and he's screaming at them. I got a sense that it was money, that he felt people had been stealing money from him and that the studio had been ripping him off, and that um, he was calling himself a, like a whore or he had been whored out. Uh, he seemed like he was upset, but I did not at this point, this is maybe early evening, it was before the sun went down on the second day. Uh, I remember he took the phone at one point and called my um, divorce attorney. I had at, at some point prior to this got a divorce attorney, or not a divorce attorney, a domestic relations attorney to do a uh, post-snup because we got married in February and th there wasn't, there was never any mention or, or talk from Johnny about a prenup, but I had had interactions with his sister and so I thought, okay, I'll get a lawyer and let's do, let's do a post-snup. When Johnny found out about that or when I reminded him of that in Australia, he, went outside and called my divorce attorney and fired her and said the only way out of this was death again. And I heard that already at this point, March 2015, um, probably 25 times. 
So he's screaming at her. He calls his agents. I, I, I hear um, uh, uh, him talking incoherently, to, uh, screaming incoherently at my lawyer and uh, his um, agent. He comes back inside, and I genuinely didn't know if he was still mad at me or if it was about me at all. I didn't know. It didn't seem like it was connected to, to reality at all. Um, at some point shortly after that, I have been saying to Johnny, you need to sleep, let's eat some dinner, baby, let's relax, please, like, calm down. I, in, my, I, in my head, I was thinking that it would genuinely change if you just got some sleep. He needed to sleep it off, he needed to come down off the drugs. Clearly, the combination of what he had taken pill-wise with whatever else he was hiding from me was not good. I had recognized that sort of delusion. I had recognized that sort of unattached to reality rage. I had recognized the patterns of those kind of loops where he's yelling about things that aren't even being discussed or talked about. I knew already that he just needed to sleep it off, clean up, you know, sober up. And uh, I thought we could. I put, I remember I went to the fridge, I got out the steaks so that they would you know, be ready to cook, and I got out some of the food I was going to put together for dinner, and I went upstairs. Um, I don't know if I came back down in my nightgown at that point or if that was shortly after, but uh, the next thing I remember is uh, coming downstairs and um, looking for him. We had a uh, an interaction that I can't really describe. It didn't make a lot of sense to me. He was just belligerent, belligerent, throwing things, screaming at me. Um, and I realized I was back on the chopping block. I realized it was back. Like, I realized that the arrows were pointed at me again. And I tried to defend myself. I was explaining, you know, trying to say that... Objection, you know, Your Honor, hearsay. It was not for to prove the truth of the matter. She hasn't even said it yet, but, but try, try not to say what you're saying unless it needs it for context or something. Try, try, try to uh, say uh, what he's I'll saying. I'll sustain the objection. Okay. okay. Uh, he, he was just belligerent. I don't know how to describe to you because it wasn't making sense. It wasn't making sense. Um, I, I don't know how, um, I don't know how the immediate next like string of of the next part of the violence actually even initiated, but again, he has me up against the wall, and I remember this time he slams me up against the wall hard. I mean, I hit my head hard, and this is a wall next to the I say kitchenette, but it it's more of a bar. Uh, I remember there were these cooling fridges and I remember kind of being slammed up against those. I remember pushing him off of me. I remember the name calling, the whore, the slut, the fat ass. I remember a lot of name calling. Um, I said, um, had, he, had he been drinking by this time? He was drinking. Calls for speculation and leading. I'll just say this leading. What, if any, drinks had you observed Mr. Depp have by this time? Well, I had already seen him drink right in front of me. He took a big swig out of a wine bottle up, upstairs right in front of me as a, um, as in a gesture of, um, like, looked right at me and sw took a big swig out of it as a, you know, like a, a show of, for, you know, did it right in my face to make a point. And then when I came downstairs, he was drinking from the bottle. Um, I, don't, I, I don't know what kind of liquor. I remember there was another bottle open, and I was wondering why he was drinking both. Um, but at some point, um, uh, he, he had me up against this the wall next to the cooling fridges, and... I remember slamming my head up against the thing. He had me by the neck, squeezing my neck, and uh, it got really, 
it got really nasty. It went from like, oh, no one likes you. No one likes me. Everyone warned me about you. That's what it was. He started to tell me that everyone had warned him about me and that he wished he had never married me, wished he had never met me. Um, no, no one liked me. You know, it sounds uh, childish, but uh, I, I, I remember feeling really hurt. And then at some point, I shove him hard to get him off me. And he shoved me back and he said, you want to go, little girl? Th th that, um, I couldn't, as I sit here today, tell you if that happened before he choked me up against the wall, but at some point, um, I am in a, in a, like a, a struggle with him where I'm holding his shirt lapel, um, and he kind of just flings me, for lack of a better way to describe it, throws me, um, uh, across the room. I land on the a games table, it's like a ping pong table. And I don't know if I was holding on to him or if he p pursued me separate, but he gets on top of me on the games table and is just whacking me in the face, like repetitive. Um, we struggle on the games table, I don't know I don't know how we get up. I don't know if he pulls me up. I wish I could tell you, but we were in this struggle down in this this games room by the bar, and um, and we had this conversation about the the drinking or argument about the drinking, and um, he holds up this bottle to me, um, and. You know, I'm I'm saying, did did you drink this whole thing? Something stupid. Uh, focusing on this detail, and he um, is telling me that I can't control him anymore, and um, that if I really, you know, if I really wanted to try, take it. And then he's like taunting me to take the bottle from him. Uh, if I really, if I really want him to stop, why don't I, why don't I take it from him? Go on, go on. I kept saying, go on, and kind of gesturing with the, the bottle towards me. And uh, like, he does that two or three times. I reach for it, he'd revoke it, kind of laugh at me. And he's holding out the bottle. I think like maybe the third time or so I get a hold of it. I pick it up and I slam it down on the ground right in between us. There's a tile floor, a white tile floor. And I smashed the bottle on the floor. And that really set him off. <sighs> so stupid. Um, sorry. I, he's, um, it was like a light bulb switch went off. And he starts screaming. Um, I don't know if he backhanded me or hit me normally. I don't, I, I don't really recall, but I remember it sent me down to the ground. Um, I remember by the time I picked myself off the floor, I stand up. He's got a bottle in his hand, and he threw it at me. It missed, thankfully, but I kind of pulled myself back into the bar area. I... Don't know how much time passed, but at some point he had a broken bottle uh, up against my face, neck area by my jawline, and he told me he'd carve up my face. I don't know at what point in the evening. I couldn't tell you what sequence-wise when that happened, but it was terrifying. It wasn't the first time he said that to me. He said that to me on the plane as well. Um, but this time he was holding a broken bottle to me. Uh, I, I, I honestly don't remember if I, um, threw anything in his direction. I, I don't think I did. Um, I just remember him having me by the nightgown. Um, I remember 
him flailing me, throwing me around. I'm flailing. Um, I, this is after um, there were some bottles broken on the floor. Uh, I think this is actually after, again, forgive me, I wish I could remember the sequence, but it's flashes. He's throwing these bottles at me. Um, I remember retreating. There were also cans, like uh, soda cans, beer or soda cans. And they're coming at me one after the other. And I keep pulling myself into the bar area. There's a bar behind me in like a, I don't know, like an L shape. The, he's standing in the only way you can exit. So I'm kind of trapped in front of this sink. Surrounded by bar on three sides with him in front of me-ish. Kind of front off to the, off to the left. And he's throwing these bottles one after the other. And I can feel glass breaking behind me. I remember feeling um, one of them go by my head really fast. I mean, the, a, veloci a real velocity. I remember being terrified. I remember I couldn't move. I couldn't go anywhere. Um, I eventually, I'm trying to, I don't know, he ran out of things to throw. I think that's how I moved myself towards the exit. And I believe that's most likely when we got kind of in this struggle by the bar area um, because I, I remember my feet slipping on the tile as he was slamming me from the wall to the countertops. At one point he has me up against the, the wall and he's punching the wall. He um, had my you know nightgown and it kind of ripped it off my chest. I remember at one point he's teasing me, taunting me that I he has my, um, my breasts in his hand. Um, my nightgown came completely off. It was ripped off of me. So I was naked. And I'm slipping around on this tile. And trying to get my footing. And I remember slipping on this tile. The glass was underneath me. And I remember just trying to get my footing. You know, I felt really destabilized and felt really vulnerable. I'm naked and he's flinging me around. And at some point I'm up against the wall and he's screaming at me that he fucking hates me, that it ruined his life. I remember the, I ruined his life over and over. And he starts punching the, the wall next to my head, holding me by the neck. I get free from him. I kind of step back from him and it's like his energy shifted to the phone. There's a wall mounted phone on the on the wall next to where my head was. And he went from punching the the wall to like realizing there was a phone there and he picked up the phone and he's screaming. He's Rah! like at the top of his lungs screaming, I fucking hate you. I fucking hate you. You ruined my fucking life and screaming at the top of his lungs, he picks up the phone and starts bashing the phone against the wall, against the wall where I was just being held. And I remember kind of having some distance on, on what was happening and watching him do this. And it was like his energy had shifted and I was that phone all of a sudden. And he was just over and over again, smashing this phone into the wall over and over again, screaming at me. And I was watching the phone every single time he pulled his hand back. It was just breaking into pieces. I, I remember thinking this phone is disappearing. He's smashing it to smithereens, just going into the wall. And at, at some point, he's on top of, 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 of no phone, but screaming the same thing. I fucking hate you. You ruined my fucking life. I'm on the countertop. It had me by the neck. And he felt like he was on top of me. And I'm, lo I, I'm looking at him in his eyes. And I don't see him anymore. I don't see him anymore. It wasn't him. It was black. I've never been so scared in my life. It was, it was black. I couldn't see him. And he was looking at me and I was trying to get through to him. I was trying to say, 
to him in some way that it was me I was trying to get through to Johnny. And I couldn't see him. I couldn't see him at all. And it, my head was bashing against the back of the bar and I couldn't breathe. And I remember trying to get up and I was slipping on the glass. My feet were slipping. My arms were slipping on the countertops. And I remember just trying to get up so I could breathe, so I could tell him that he was really hurting me. I didn't think he knew what he was doing. I don't know how... I'm sorry. I, mean, I couldn't breathe. Please. I don't know. I couldn't, I couldn't breathe, I couldn't get through to him, I couldn't, I couldn't get up, I couldn't get up, and I don't know how that ended, I don't know, I don't know how, I don't know what happened next, I don't know how to do this, I, I, I will, when I, the, the next thing I remember, I always been over um, backwards on the bar, meaning my chest was up. I was staring at the blue lights and my chest was on this, my back was on the countertops. And I, Thought he was punching me. I thought he was. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, he was. His. I felt this pressure. I felt this pressure. He, oh, my pubic bone. <laughs> I, he thought he was. I thought he was punching me. I just saw his arm. I could feel his arm moving, and I, it looked like he was punching me. But I could just feel this pressure. It was like if it kept hitting. It didn't feel pain. It was just a pressure on my pubic bone, and I. Don't know. I, I don't remember what I said. I just remember being really still, not wanting to move. I remember looking around the room. I remember looking at all the broken bottles, broken glass, and I remember that it's just not wanting to move because I didn't know if it was broken. I didn't know if the bottle that he had inside me was broken. I couldn't feel it. I couldn't feel it. I didn't feel pain. I didn't feel pain. I didn't feel anything. I just... I didn't want it. I didn't, I looked around and I saw so much broken glass that I didn't know if he would know, if he would know, um, I didn't know if he would know if it was broken or not. And I just remember thinking, please God, please, please. I hope it's not broken. I don't know how that ended. I don't know how I got off the countertop. I, I just remember it being in the bathroom. 
I remember retching. I remember the sound my voice was making. I remember I lost control of my bladder. I remember just retching. I remember there was some blood on the floor. Um, I got up at some point. I don't know how that night ended. I don't remember what happened. I don't remember. I have a memory of him begging me not to leave. I remember going outside the front door. I remember him coming out to the front area, but I, I, I don't remember. If that was before or after this, I, I don't remember. I just have that memory. I remember uh, taking a bunch of sleeping pills. Not a bunch, like two, which is a lot for me. <clears throat> I remember falling asleep or I don't remember falling asleep, but I know I fell asleep because I woke up the next day. Um, I assume it was late morning. Um, he, I could hear him downstairs. Uh, I could hear Marilyn Manson. Um, music, not in person. I could hear the music. Maybe he said it was Marilyn, or maybe I could uh, recognize it. I don't remember, but I became aware of it. That's what I was hearing. It was blaring. It became clear, obvious to me when I walked downstairs. He was still up. He hadn't gone to sleep again. Um, I uh, walked downstairs, and I saw this um, brown on the walls going down the stairs. And the brown on the walls became clear, like it became clear, like lettering. And then it was obvious it was uh, dried blood. He had written down this, that we had a spiral staircase, like white cream walls. Uh, there was blood uh, on the carpet. Um, I could see blood drips. Uh, I, I thought it was from my arms or feet, but it was drips. So that plus the wall writing, I saw this brown letters on the wall and then realized that he was trying, that, that it was a, meant to be a message, but it was incoherent. Um, I saw what looked like my name, um, but I really couldn't uh, make out most of the, the rest of the message walking down the stairs. Uh, I saw a bird in the house. I thought that was surreal. I went down to the main level where my painting studio was, and I had some canvases out. And it was in the living room area. And oh, by the time I got down to the bottom of the stairs, um, the the dried blood had been kind of taken over by paint. It was um, blue, navy blue paint, and then brown paint. <clears throat> And uh, then it was, you know, on the walls, on the um, lampshades, pillow uh, pillowcases of the of the sofa, the sofa cu cushions. There was blood in the painting studio. The paint, my canvases had been covered with what looked like just brown, blue, green, red mess. It was just a mess. There was a painting that had. Uh, you know, a, a painting that the owners had that had, um, you know, like giant penis on it and, you know, some other things. There was a table overturned, a bunch of broken glass on that, on that floor. I walked downstairs where I heard the music coming from, and that's where I found him, um, blaring this music. He was in the study, which is in the, by the bar games table area off to the side and it was just glass and blood and 
broken windows and a broken window and it just it looked like a mess. The table was collapsed and I, I walked into the study. Um, I was there. A couple unbroken empty bottles. I remember wondering where they came from. Uh, and he just looked, he wasn't there anymore. He wasn't there. It wasn't Johnny. He was standing at the office desk. He had his hand wrapped in this, uh, like rags or, you know, bandana rags. And I, I think he took them down or somehow showed me and he said, look what you made me do. I did this for you, something to that effect. And I kind of put together, it was covered in paint. And I put together that that's like he was using his finger. I quickly became aware that that's what he was using as a paintbrush, even though there was lots of paintbrushes around. Um, and we didn't have any sort of like coherent conversation, as you can imagine. Um, I figured out he was missing a finger. He kind of held it up, and I said, "What did you do? When? Like, what? What did you do? When?" And I realized in my head that there had been many hours since this probably happened, assuming that that was the happened with the phone. And in any case, I I knew it had been way too long that he had had this blood, you know, that he was bleeding. And uh, I said, I'm going to call 911 if you don't call Jerry now. Uh, I don't, I still don't recall which of us um, called Jerry Judge, his security. Um, at some point we went upstairs. I, I, he came upstairs, but he went up to the third floor while I was in the main floor, the, the entry level floor. I went to make him a cup of coffee because he was demanding more Red Bull. And I was thinking that's probably not a good idea. I don't know why coffee would be so much better, but in my head it was. Uh, I thought maybe, I don't know, sober him up or I, I don't know. There was help was coming though. And I remember I made him coffee. As soon as I handed it to him, he threw it at the TV and started screaming again. It was like back to, back to square one. Shortly after that security arrives, um, I, I don't know how long, maybe a few seconds or minutes went by, not, not long, but they kind of find Johnny, or Johnny finds them walking out of the front door, and they were trying to figure out what was going on, and as they were kind of looking at him and I, and trying to figure out what the heck was going on, Johnny took his um, penis out of his pants and started pee, tr trying to pee or peeing outside of the house, saying that he had more messages for me and this is in front of security and they kind of just like looked at each other and looked at him and kind of not laughed but kind of half you know played it off and corralled him it was how, how it looked it looked like corralling a wild animal back into the house with you know with his penis still out of his pants peeing or trying to pee that's what he was indicating and he went to the wall of the house and I remember him standing at the wall trying to leave me more, saying he was gonna, he had more information for me, he was gonna leave me more message, uh, more messages, more, more information for me. It made no sense. And um, Jerry Judge, his security, and one of the um, nurses uh, shortly after, I, th I think they put me in the theater room, but I, shortly after I remember talking to one of the nurses and she was trying to, Give me drugs to sedate Objection, me. Your Honor. Hearsay. She's trying to give her drugs. She no, didn't oh, say anything. That, Thank okay. you. Keep going. Um, and I just remember, uh, I just remember crying and rejecting what they were trying to give me, and fighting with them about how much they were trying to give me. I, I felt like I needed to figure out what the, what what was happening with my life. What was happening with Johnny? I didn't know if he was okay. I, I didn't know. I, I actually did, had no idea, like, could this be something he, he could die from? If anything, just the, the drugs and the alcohol. 
I mean, that alone, I, I didn't, you know, I, I was, I was, I, I just remember sca being scared and being in this theater room, this dark theater room, and not knowing what the heck was going on. Uh, and uh, I eventually was taken up to my room by uh, one of the nurses, uh, and they, I, I, I'm sorry, Be Debbie, and, or, or suggesting I go up to my room. I went up to my room, and uh, I, I took um, a quarter of what she was trying to get me to take, and I eventually fell asleep. I came back downstairs um, to look for my phone, which Johnny had picked up before security came in. Um, he picked up my phone and said, we're going to get to the bottom of this. And he wasn't making any sense at the time. I, understandably, just a different, nothing made sense. But he picked up my phone and was saying, we're going to get to the, we're going to, I'm going to prove this. We're going to get to this. We're going to get to the proof of this. Something to that effect. I don't remember his exact words. Um, and he pushed record on my phone. I didn't actually at the time think that he had done that. I, 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 um, I, I had no idea, but I did know that I didn't have my phone when I woke up and went downstairs to get it. It was dead. It was sitting out on the, the um, dining room table by where Jerry Judge was sitting. Jerry Judge was on the phone and talked to me, and I went up, back up to bed, took more of this um, sedative, and fell asleep. Um, and then I think the next day... Uh, went to the closet and took out the clothes that he hadn't painted on. I guess when he went back upstairs, he had um, just like, it looked like what he had done is dip his hand in a bucket of paint and just wiped it on my clothes. Just went and he had picked up another portion of my clothes and put them in the bathtub. And I don't know if he added paint or if he just was, had touched them with paint, but it was this ugly navy blue brown paint. Um, I packed what was hackable, what well, hadn't been destroyed, and, um, and, and, and eventually left Australia with, uh, with Ben King, who you met, uh, on the way there. Let me stop you there, because I want to ask you some more questions about those three days, and then we can talk about Ben King and, and going home. So do you recall what bottle Mr. Depp was drinking from and then had that back and forth with you and you threw on the ground? Objection, Your Honor. Compound. Leading. Sustained. Do you recall what the bottle was? No, I don't. Okay. Do you recall whether it was wine or liquor? It was liquor. Do you the wine was upstairs. Okay. Do you recall Excuse me. <coughs> what color Excuse me. it was? Um... Well, I believe it was um, white, or, I mean clear, but okay. I can't be certain. I think it was clear. Do you remember whether it had a handle on it or not? No, it was a normal bottle. Okay. Like, a, like I remember because he was holding it like this and gestured to me to take it, and I, I did try to reach for the bottle. It was a normal size, but for life of me, I can't remember, like, what brand. Okay. Um, when you woke up that third morning and came out of your room, what, if any, food did you see? Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Objection, Your Honor, leading. Overruled. Um, there was mashed potatoes uh, smeared all over the bedroom door, um, on the wall, in various places. But I remember opening the door and being really confused at first as to what it was. It had little, like, specks of green in it, I assumed to be spinach. And um, the, throughout the house, there was food rubbed in places, just countertops, walls, doors, as I mentioned. And uh, later that evening, I found um, the raw meat that I had left out, the steak, all over the house. There were pieces of it. Um, it was cut up. And... Um, he had ripped my nightgown into pieces, into shreds, and wrapped the meat up, like wrapped the steak pieces up with my nightgown. It was this really beautiful burgundy silk nightgown that 
had this black lace trim. I ironically got it from Dr. Kipper for a wedding gift. And it was wrapped, I found it, I continued to find it throughout the rest of the time that I was in the house in Australia. There's a pieces of it in the microwave, pieces of it in the produce drawer, uh, in the uh, closet drawer. Uh, I mean, just raw, raw meat wrapped up in this, in my nightgown, as well as the smeared food on the walls. It was bizarre. What, it what if anything, do you recall seeing on any mirrors? Oh, he had um, written, um, he had written on the bathroom mirrors. Uh, in the bedroom, and I, I believe he had, um, there was another mirror. I just don't recall which bathroom it was in. I suppose it was the one that I went to, which is on the very bottom level um, where I was um, retching, uh, for lack of a better way to describe it. I think it was in that um, bathroom that he also wrote on that mirror as well. What, if anything, do you recall? In blood and I'm, paint, sorry. I'm sorry. What, if anything, do you recall of any lampshades being written on? Well, he uh, wrote on messages to me, um, you know, things to the effect of go-getter, you know, horror sort of thing, like that, that sort of language. But calling me easy, calling me a slut, um, calling me and... You know, like just things about ego and what a whore I was. and But th it was hard to make sense of it because it was clear he was just out of his mind. It was, I mean, the, the, he wrote on a, on, a, on a back of a pillow in blood. And you can tell because it dries like in this ugly brown color. He wrote on the walls going downstairs. Like it took a... In fact, you could see where he, it looked like he had run out of blood because the messages became, it, the, the markings became clearly letters. And the letters kind of became, like I could see where he had clearly run out of blood or it wasn't bleeding enough and went and got paint. And then it became paint and blood. You could see both. You could see where he went back with it. Same with the mirrors. You could, I could see where the, all the dried blood was and... And then I could see a different set of markings with paint and some other material. So I'm gonna go back to the time in the bar, and I know this is very painful. Do you recall what Mr. Depp was saying to you when he had the bottle and was pushing it against your pubic bone? He said that, um, uh, that he would fucking kill me. I'll fucking kill you. He said it to me over and over again. He said, I'll fucking kill you. Did you bleed from the vagina as well? I did. And did you experience any pain later? I don't, I didn't. I wasn't thinking about that. I was heartbroken. Eventually, I realized that I could be hurt because I was bleeding. Um, but I, I convinced myself it wasn't broken and that, that I, that the bottle wasn't broken or else it would be a lot worse. and. The discomfort I was feeling afterwards just paled in comparison to how scared, shocked I was. I'm scared. I just married this man. I just married him. And forgive me for asking this, but I need to just make sure the record's clear. You were penetrated up the vagina into the pubic bone, is that correct? Objection, Your Honor. Leading. Sustained. What if any penetration was there in your vagina? The bottle. Yeah. I can't believe 
I'm Can so sorry. Do this? <laughs> I am so sorry. <laughs> Johnny uh, had the bottle inside of me. And was <laughs> shoving it inside of me over and over again. Did you experience any cuts on other parts of your body? My forearms were cut. My bottoms and my feet were sliced up pretty good. Did you have any other bruising or swelling? Um, I had a bruise across my jaw, I suppose, from the one of the many times he clocked me in the face downstairs. Um, I think, um, I think I just didn't make a record of any, anything else. I'm going to ask you to turn to uh, let's go to uh, 18 10 well actually let's go to 18 15 Michelle if you can bring that up defendants 18 15 and I think these are all in your honor so if yes. we can publish yes they can all be published Um, is this the game table? Yes, it is. Okay. And is this, based on your testimony, is this where you were, were you on top of this table? Yeah, that he briefly got on top of me, um, and was pushing on my throat, actually, at some point when I was on the table. I had forgotten about that. And, um... Uh, this, though, looks like it um, is after a lot of the stuff was cleaned up because it didn't look quite like this. Okay. And it, 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 did the table collapse? Yes, it did. Objection, Your Honor. Leading. Sustained. What, if anything, happened to the table? The table collapsed underneath me um, when Johnny <coughs> threw me into it and got on top of me. Or fell on top of me. I, I, I honestly don't know which one. We could look at 1816, please, defendants. Do you recognize this, what's depicted in this picture? Um, yes. What is it? It looks like, uh, the bottles that were by Johnny on the desk when I came down that last morning and he was still up, still drinking. If we could go to defendants 1817. The bottle shape. The bottle shape. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I don't. Um, I have not. Go back to 1816, please. Your Honor, I had used. Is there a question? I was going to ask a question. What do you? What more do you recall? You had. Uh, sorry, it took me a minute to respond because. It's hard. Um, it took me a minute to respond because I had not remembered seeing the bottle that Johnny was using on me. I hadn't, I didn't have a memory of seeing it. And this picture um, I wasn't aware of until just the, the other day, yesterday, the day before. And um, and I felt my stomach tighten up, like I was going to be sick when I saw it. 
because even though I didn't remember seeing the bottle, what I had remembered is a pressure, like something square, which is why I thought he was punching me. It was, I, feel, I was feeling the square, something firm hitting me, like butting up against my pubic bone. Over and over again, I, I felt that pressure against my bone. It felt like a flat surface. But I, when I realized it was a, an object or a bottle and not his fist, which is what I thought, you know, because his, his arm, I could see his arm while he was holding me down, saying he was going to kill me, but I thought he was, you know, his arm looked like he was punching me. Um, and I hadn't seen this bottle. I didn't know. And then this came out in Ben's evidence because he didn't share it until this date. Objection, Your Honor. Trial. Sustained. And so I recognize it. Okay. All right, now let's go to defendants 1817. Do you recognize this area or this picture? Uh, yes, it looks like one area of the bar. Um, uh, obviously, this is some time later because all, all the liquid is dried up. It's quite slippery. I was slipping all over that tile. That's how I know. Okay. Uh, looks like a lot of the glass has been s cleaned up almost. And then let's go to 1818. Actually, I think I'm that's, sorry, which yeah, which, I don't have that. That's number. not in evidence. Yeah, I, that's a duplicate. Let's go to 1819. My apologies. Okay. Do you recognize this? Yes, I do. What is this? This is close to where my feet were when I was dangling off the counter, um, when he had me on the countertop by my neck. My feet were slipping on the tile, and I just remember my feet. I remember feeling glass underneath my feet and slipping. I couldn't get up. Uh, I couldn't alleviate the pressure on my neck as he was crushing me. Um, that's around that, not around, that's next to that. The All the way at the end of the picture is the bar where I was standing when he was throwing bottles at me. Can we go to 1820? Do you recognize what's depicted here? the area yes that's um to the left would be the where the uh, wall mounted phone was uh right to the left of that um to the right of that is the little l-shaped bar that i was telling you about where i was trapped and and when you say to the left of the wall I'm what sorry. do you mean is it off the picture or on the picture so if you're looking at this picture Imagine up and to the left at, at person height, at site height, um, it was a, like a, and I don't know if it was antique, but it kind of looked old fashioned, like an old fashioned, heavy, what looked heavy. I didn't pick up the receiver, but it looked heavy when I was watching it break. You know, it looked like these like really heavy glass, I mean, excuse me, it's really um, thick, heavy, not plastic, but like a, Bakelite or something heavy uh, material on it. That's my best guess. So that would have been to the left, and then to the right would have been the the very end of the bar that you just saw a picture of. All right, let's go to 1821, defendants. And do you recognize what's depicted in this photo? Yes, that's the bar that I was just talking about. Okay. Now, I, I see a phone on the right side. Is that the phone you were talking about? No, that's not. 
This is a, a wall-mounted phone. That's a, a landline. And you see straight ahead at the, at the very, if you look straight ahead at the picture, on the top part of that, it appears to be some broken glass. Do you recall, what do you recall of that? Uh, I recall more than just this window being broken. This is one of the windows that he broke when he was throwing things at me. My, my body was standing in front of that little kitchen sink you see at the end of the picture. Um, I suppose that's some of the glass I felt, though, on the backs of my arms. Um, like when, I, when, when the window shattered. Okay. Let's go to 1822. 1822, I don't have in evidence. 1822 is not in evidence. My pop, that's, that's exactly why I just went over here. Let's go to 1825, I think. Is that the next one, Your Honor? 1825 is in evidence. I'm not sure. Okay. Do you recognize this picture? Yes, that's where Johnny was standing. Uh, when I found him the the last morning, that morning, it might have been like midday. When I say morning, it was after I woke up. Um, it was certainly not early morning. Um, and he was standing at that desk, behind the desk, with the Manson blaring. When when I when I found him and told him that I was going to call um, nine one one if he didn't call Jerry. If you look at, in this picture, there appears to be a lampshade down below. Do you recognize that lampshade down below the table? That's uh, one of the lampshades Johnny wrote um, threats or messages to me on. Okay. Then let's go to 1827. Do you recognize this? Yes, I do. That's my painting studio. So when I walked downstairs uh, and saw all the all the blood on the walls, I walked into this room first. That's where the the stairs empty into this room, and kind of my painting area. And those are the canvases that he um, repainted. And do you see, if you look by the white, the white tablecloth table to the right of that, do you see a lampshade there? Uh, yes. I, I don't know if that's the same lampshade or another one. Okay. Then let's go to 1828. And do you recognize what's in that one? I do. Those are my, uh, were my paintings um, that I don't, I don't know when he did that, if it was before or after the writing on the walls, but he just um, ruined them. So I just want to make sure, I, so the painting canvas that's dark colored, there's two of them there. Uh, well, there's, yeah, there's two or three, um, and then there's a smaller one in the, in, in, in the center, and that was um, uh, his daughter I was trying to paint a portrait of, and that was untouched. Okay, and then, but, but just so we're clear, the one directly in front of you that looks like it's just a, a lot of dark colors, was oh. that dark colors before, or? I am Objection, a Your Honor, leading. I said, was that dark colors before? I'll sustain the objection. Uh, what, if any, change was there on that canvas? Oh, I'm a, I'm a terrible painter, but I'm not that bad. That was not my painting. It was um, the start of a portrait, and um, he changed it dramatically. <laughs> okay. And then to the right side, on the other side, of to, more to the right than the one you already testified to, is that what that picture looked like before, or is that? So it, Objection leading. 
What, if any, changes were there to that picture? Well, the, the three canvases um, were portraits, um, so they looked similar to the one that's in the center that I was doing of his uh, daughter. Okay. And the white that's below, what, if any, changes were there to that, the, the white canvas that you see there? It just looks like the painting was, um, it looks like once he destroyed Objection the... Objection calls for speculation. All right. Just see. Was there anyone else in the house besides Mr. Depp and you? Not that I know of, no, okay. and no one was around. Okay. Well, do you have any reason to believe somebody other than Mr. Depp did this? Objection leading. I, what, what, if any, what if any reason do you believe that Mr. Depp did this? Objection. I, I, that was not... What if any? What's, what's uh, leading? No, I'll just uh, overrule that objection. Thank you. Um, it was just Johnny and I in that house over the course of those three days, roughly. Um, there might have been somebody, his assistant or something, come on, on the first day or second day, I can't recall. But uh, for the majority of the, I mean, for the entirety of what I've been describing to you, it was Johnny and I in that house. And did you do any of this? Did you no. create any of this damage? No. Um, I'm also going to take a look at the white tablecloth to the right there. Uh, and also, Johnny was covered in paint, so okay. to answer your question fully, um, that's also how I know. All right. So I'm also just going to draw your attention to that white tablecloth over there. Uh, does it appear to have some paint on that as well? Yes, there is paint uh, all over the p place, mm -hmm. to say it plainly. Now, the painting that you uh, indicated, there was a, a, a large penis, I believe. Where was that? Uh, I believe it was just, like, if you're looking at this, I believe it was on the wall, almost right next to the painting directly center that we're looking at. That's my best recollection, but I can't be entirely sure. Okay. Let's go to 1828. I think that was 1828. Oh, 1829. My apologies. And do you recognize this photo? What yes, I do. In it? And, and what, what was this? Um, this is one of the lampshades that Johnny chose as a medium to leave me messages in blood and paint. Okay. Let's go to 1830. Do you recognize this? Yes, that's one of the bathroom mirrors. Okay. And if you could just look to the left, and I'm going to go ahead and circle it over here. You see red and black there. Do you, would you agree? Yes. Okay. Um, and there were some questions that were asked earlier about that red. What, if anything, did you write on this mirror? I didn't write anything on the mirrors. I'm as confused as anyone and hearing that testimony. Okay. Um, and based on looking at this area that I have circled, um, is, th is the black on top or underneath the red? Objection, Your Honor. Calls for speculation leading. I sustain the objection. You know, this might be a good time to take a break. Why don't we go ahead okay. and take our afternoon break, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go ahead and have our uh, break. Do not discuss the testimony with anybody and don't do any outside research. We'll come back here. If... All right, in 15 minutes.
All right, so we'll come back at 402. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right.
Okay. All back? <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Before we get the jury, I just want to see, uh, talking with Sammy, is Friday, May 27th, it's not, we usually don't meet on Fridays, but is that an okay day to have trial on that Friday? It's the day, it's the Friday before Memorial Day. I want to check with the jury, but I want to check with you first. Yes. That'll actually be closing argument day for anybody that wants to know. <laughs> okay. okay. So, right. So I just want to make sure that keeps on track. But if, if it's good with the jury, I just want to make sure that that, that Friday works, is good with that them. That works for me, Your Honor. Okay. Oh, yeah, sure. Thank you, Your Honor. Michelle, if you can bring back up 1830 for a moment. 1830, I'm sorry. Amber, we were talking about this right before the break. Um, it still has my highlight. Which color is underneath the other? Objection. Calls for speculation. Chicken, based on your perception, which I'll color is underneath? I'll sustain the objection. All right. Let's do this. Let's bring up Defendants 375, which is already into evidence. I need to clear that highlight, Your Honor, but I don't have the control on mine. There we go. Thank you. It's in the top right corner if you need it, but that's fine. Thank you. Oh, there it is. My menu was hidden. Um, Amber, I'm going to ask you, ask you to take a look. at This is the picture that we saw earlier, and do you see the area that's written in red here? Yes. Okay. What, if anything, did you have to do with the writing of that red? Nothing. Do you, before this trial, did you know who Carly Simon was? Uh, I might have heard her music, but no, I didn't. Okay. Did you know what songs Carly Simon wrote or sang? No, you had to tell me. Thank you. All right. And then 
it, if you can just remember this picture, this picture again, the red area there that I've circled, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to ask Michelle to take this one down and put 1830 back up. And I'm going to ask you to take a look at this. Did you, what if anything, did you do to this mirror with respect to the black or the red? I, I didn't touch it. Okay. And what if any pictures did you take? I took a picture of the, it was the picture we had right before this is the one I took because it was in the bathroom where I found my clothes in the tub and stuff like that. Okay. And that's, let's go to 374, please. That's already in evidence. Is that the picture you're referring to? Uh, yes, it is. Okay, and I'm sorry, I just want to make sure that I understand. What else was in this bathroom where this mirror was? Uh, the bathtub and another mirror, which also had writing on it. Uh, the bathtub had a few of my clothes in it and paint. And both of the two mirrors were painted. I believe I took a picture of both mirrors. And then I'm going to ask you, Michelle, if you can bring us back to 1831. And did you take this picture? No. Okay. And do you see in the mirror there, uh, can you see the bathtub in the back there? Yes, I can. Was that the bathtub that you're referring to? Yes, it is. Okay. And that had your clothes in it? Objection leading. Sustained. I'm sorry. What, if anything, did it have in the bathtub? A few of my uh, clothes with paint on them. Okay. Uh, you can see, um, I, th I think that's what I see up in the corner of the mirror. Okay. And then let's go to 377 for a moment. That was in. Evidence already? Do you recall seeing this picture earlier? I do. Okay. And now let's go to 1829, please. Does that appear to be the same lampshade, but in color? It does appear that. Okay. It is. Thank you. All right. Now let's just go through. I'm going to ask you to take a look at... 1834. Um, what does this depict that you can recall? Um, that is the TV that Johnny threw uh, the cup of coffee at. Okay. And let's go to 1835. And what does this depict? One of the sofas in the living room um, next to the kitchen with blood on it. Okay. And then let's go to 1837. And what does this depict? It's uh, one of the guest bedrooms with Johnny's iPad on the bed and blood and or paint on the on the duvet cover. All right, thank you. Now let's do 1838. And what does this depict? Uh, a lamp shade, or a lamp that has been um, robbed of, it, of the shade. Okay, let's go to 1839. What does this depict? Uh, another, a different bed 
with um, more blood on it. Then let's go to 1840. And what does this depict? Um, blood on one of the guitars um, that Johnny was apparently trying to play. Okay. Then you didn't try to play a guitar. Objection, Your Honor. What Calls for any, speculation. I didn't oh, even get oh, the words oh, oh, oh. at this point. Next, your question. Go okay. Ahead. What if any effort did you make to make to play a guitar? <laughs> I've never played the guitar. Okay. Let's go to 1840. One. What does this depict? Uh, it is uh, where Johnny slammed the end of a bottle uh, into the wall while um, holding me up against it. Is, it. is this in the bar area? Um, it, it, this happened in two rooms, so it's hard to tell. Okay. The bottle into the wall... Um, the best of my recollection happened in the um, kitchenette bar area downstairs, but I can't be 100% certain. Okay. And let's go to 1842. What does this depict? Another broken lamp. Okay. And then I've just got a few more left, 1805. And what does this depict? Wine spill. It looks like a, a remnants of a, a, a wine glass being thrown. Um, and it looks like a broken glass. Do you recognize where this was in the house? Well, it looks like a bedside table, but I can't be certain. Okay. Let's go to 1806. Let's um, do you, you know. Let's let's skip that one and let's go to eighteen oh eight. Do you know what this depicts? Uh, wine spill. Okay. All right. Now you started to testify. But well, before we go there, um, in these pictures, would you say they accurately depict the damage that you saw that third morning? No. What else? What? Why? How are they not accurately depicting? Well, if if you can believe it, this is a significant. It seems significantly cleaned up. There was much more. Uh, damage, uh, specifically broken glass. On the countertops, there was a lot of bro broken glass. Um, I could feel it cutting my arms when I was trying to get up, um, and I could feel it underneath my feet. So, I, I don't, I don't know when these pictures were taken, but um, there, th there's been some cleanup. Okay. Now, you indicated that the uh, that. Johnny had had turned on your iPhone and recorded, is that correct? Yes. Did there come a time that you discovered a recording on your iPhone from Australia? Yes, much later. Um, there was this five-hour-long recording, and naturally I didn't know what that could possibly be, uh, because even though Johnny and I recorded each other often as part of our you know, struggles to figure out our relationship. Um, this one was, you know, five hours was unusual. And um, I, that's when I discovered that, that, that there had been this recording um, of the end of the Australia incident, if, if you will. And did you listen to that recording? I have heard it, yes. And, and does it accurately represent what was depicted in that recording? Yes. Objection form. Lack of foundation. Right, you got approach. I'm not sure.
Ms. Perhaptis, can you tell me the number of that, the exhibit number? So I 378. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Okay. Remember, you testified that you made arrangements to return home. Can you describe, uh, let's take you to the point you left the Australia House uh, to go to the airport and were accompanied by Ben King. Could you tell the jury what transpired during that period of time? So I, I left uh, Australia shortly after that. Uh, my understanding was Johnny was in the hospital for his finger and Ben King was going to accompany me and on the ride on the way to the airport, uh, Johnny calls me uh, and we were just crying on the phone. We were, he was crying. Uh, he asked if it was if 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 he had killed it. If he meaning the relationship, it was. I don't remember the exact words that he. Use, but it was kind of asking me in that in that way. Is it done? Is this over? Did we kill it? Did I kill it? So, that sort of thing. I I don't I don't remember what I was saying to him. But we hung up as I went into the airport. Um. I had a, um, I, was, I had a mix of feelings. I. Nothing really was making perfect sense to me, for sure. And I flew back with Ben. Uh, I don't really remember speaking to Ben on the on the flight. Okay. Do you, um, when Mr. Depp was, you, what you testified on on Mr. Whitten, Mr. Depp said to you on the phone ride, were you on the phone with anyone else, or was it just Mr. Depp you were on the phone with? I only remember speaking to Johnny, and I remember sitting in the uh, back seat of the SUV that had driven me, and we were outside of the entrance of the, where you walk into the airport, and I even then felt torn about leaving. I obviously didn't want to stay, but. I was in such shock and objection, Your Honor, non-responsive. I don't know how that's non-responsive. We're going to ask your question again. Okay. okay. Um, please tell us how you felt at that point and and uh, what Mr. Depp was saying to you. I remember. Um, I remember objection, Your Honor. Austin answered. She, she was in the middle of responding to it, Your Honor, and well, you understood. Well, it was a different question. question, but I'll sustain that objection if you want to ask. Okay, how did you feel at that time? I felt destroyed. Like my heart was broken. I didn't know what to do. I thought maybe if I left him in Australia, I thought maybe something would happen to him. I thought he might die or kill himself because it certainly seems like the trajectory he was on. He told me he had put a cigarette out on his face before, uh, the Friday before, and combined with all the, uh, uh, when I was in the bedroom and he was in the hospital, I found, and I was packing my bags and stuff, I found all these empty bags, uh, Coke bags, you know, dime bags with white residue on them. I mean, in them, um, they were in books. In the bedside table, I, I, I don't. Um, there were so many that I was like, I wondered how I didn't see it before, even though I had, you know, just gotten there. So I was worried he would die, and I was worried that we couldn't come back from what happened. I was worried that there was just no way to turn this around. There was no going back, but. Mm, shock. So 
you flew out of uh, that airport, did you have to, uh, did you have a stop anywhere before you went back to LA? Objection and relevance? Uh, in a minute, oh, I'll, I'll show you. Uh, yes, we did. We stopped in, um, in an airport. I think it was, uh, we stopped at the Sydney airport from Brisbane, I believe. And did you have to change gates there? Yes, um, I, we had a short flight to get to Sydney, and then in Sydney, um, I walked with Ben through the airport to get the next plane, and we passed a newsstand, and um, I just remember um, I passed this newsstand, and there was a book on the, on, you know, on one of the book stands outside of the store, and it had this uh, puzzle piece on it, and it, Johnny and I used to use that as a, a term of endearment, puzzle piece, you know. Um, and I saw this puzzle piece on the cover of the book, it got my attention, it said four ways to click, a relationship guide. So I bought it. And I. Um, Who was the author? Dr. Amy Banks. Okay. Go ahead, please continue. So the book, at least from the subtitle, said it was a um, a book on solving relationship problems. So I bought it and I read it on the way home. And why did you buy it and read it on the way home? Because I loved this man. I loved this man so much. And it was so toxic. And for some reason, I couldn't get him to, I couldn't get him to not hurt me. I, I, I couldn't. And it seemed like I was hurting him. We loved each other, loved each other so much. At least I loved him so much. And I, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do with this relationship. It was awful and toxic, but it was so important to me. And I loved him so much. I, I would have read a million books. So when you got back to L.A., um, how long before Mr. Depp came back? A few days, Johnny came back within a few days. He went to his um, sweets or house, the main house, which was what we did. You know, if there was a problem between Johnny and I, we weren't under the same roof once, you know, the, the fight had either paused or ended, depending, but he would he would go to sweets or, and I would stay at the ECB. And uh, so he went to sweets or upon landing, and there was some conversations with the medical team, you know, doctors and stuff. And I just remember feeling concerned for his life because things had changed. And without saying what they said to me, it... Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. She said without saying. She's, she's characterizing it. Well, uh, I'll overrule for now. We'll see where we go. Um, I was, I became really, really worried that, uh, Johnny was not going to live through this, that there would be infections or problems and things, and he wouldn't stop using Coke, and he couldn't get the surgery he needed because he wouldn't stop using Coke, and they wouldn't put him under because of all the Coke. So Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. All right, I'll Luck sustain foundation. as the last part. Okay. All right, next question. Right. So when did you next... Uh, when did you next see Mr. Depp after you got back from Australia? I saw him a few days, uh, I, I don't know how long it was, um, but it was at the doctor, I, th I think it, my best recollection is that it was in the doctor's office or around that he needed a procedure. Did there come a time that you reconciled after Australia? 
Yes, I, because it it almost felt like it it went away so quickly because there was this surgery that he needed and there was a maybe a few maybe he had more than one surgery but it was you know like it became very very about getting Johnny through the next step you know getting Johnny home getting Johnny off the coke long enough to get the the procedure done and then get after that procedure getting another procedure done and it was just these small steps and before you know it we were kind of back in it um with the prospect of course of him being done with with all the drugs and drinking because that's what necessarily had to happen for him to have this surgery so that made me feel a little you know a little bit more secure and and kind of coming back into this relationship with him. Okay. So I'm going to take you to March 23, 2015, which is a few weeks after, two and a half weeks roughly after Australia. Um, where was Johnny staying at this point? I think he was staying at the Eastern Columbia, I mean, at the ECB. Um, yeah, he was staying at the ECB at the time because we were kind of in the bedroom together the night of the 22nd, um, which is when he passed out how I found his iPad. I'm sorry, when you... Oh. I, I found his iPad open. He was texting someone with it open, he passed out, and I saw what he was texting. Please tell the jury about that. Uh, he was he was texting this woman um, that he had had a, a relationship with on and off, um, kind of at the beginning of our um, relationship, so I recognized the name, but the date was right after the wedding. I saw it, he had gone to her house after we got married. Like, upon touching down in Los Angeles, I think it was the next day he went to this woman's house that he has his sexual relationship with. And, um... What did you, what did you do as a result of seeing that on the iPad? I freaked out. I immediately like confronted him about it. I was you know I I didn't care in that moment if he did kill me, which was likely in confronting him at that stage of our lives. I didn't even care anymore at this moment. I was so, I he had already ripped my heart out, you know? It's like I've just been through what I after having been through what I went through in Australia, just weeks prior, I see this, it was like, unbelievably painful, unbelievably painful. So what did you do? I, I I'm, yelling at him so just we yelling i called i was calling him all these ugly names i was screaming at him told him to get the fuck out of the house that's what i said excuse my language but it, we were screaming at each other uh at some point uh we were upstairs in penthouse three and and we kind of get into a, a um, uh, how do you describe it? Um, pushing each other, you know? And I, I just remember um, being so mad at him for, for uh, cheating on me and doing so in this way, like right after the wedding. And then I, right after my wedding, 
go to see him and then Australia happens and it just felt like everything came crashing down and I was so hurt. Anyway, we, I, I break out of his grasp at some point and I go into my sister's room. The apartments in the ECB are connecting, at least three of them are, and they connect from upstairs only. So you could get from Johnny and I's apartment into the neighboring apartment where Whitney, my sister, was staying at the time. And then you could go from that apartment into Penthouse 5. Again, still on, on the top floor. So I went through Johnny's office, which is how you access the door that gets you into Whitney, the neighboring apartment where Whitney was, my sister. And I w went in there and woke her up crying, screaming, saying, what am I going to do? Can't your honor here, say. Sorry. All right, I'll sustain. No, no, I know that was Daffer to prove the truth of the matter. Uh, I'll sustain. In any event. All right. Sustain the objection. Okay, so you went to Whitney's, don't tell the jury what you said to her, but what happened next? Um, uh, Johnny comes into Penthouse 4 and um, grabs me. I don't know what, he, why, I don't know what he was doing, um, but at one moment I um, kind of, I'm aware that my sister's somewhere nearby and I, I thought about that. I just remember thinking about that and he um, I, I, I remember getting kind of free from, from, from Johnny and, and he left or he walked out of the room. When you say free from Johnny, what if any connection, did you have the physical connection before that? Well, I mean, I'm, you know, trying to stand up for myself and Johnny would at that point stage in our relationship it was it, he would just throw me shove me hit me in the face I mean it was just like all I could do is just try to try to fight back or try to not get more hurt than not doing anything would have certainly left me uh, I don't really recall um, specifics I, 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 I remember at one point um, he had his uncasted hand in my hair and I was looking at the carpet. I don't know, I don't know what happened immediately after that, but I remember he left. He was out of the room for a while. Uh, I re uh, don't know how we got into, I think I heard him in P5. Again, this is the neighboring apartment of that. So there's P4 in between and P5 is the, the corner and that apartment was, empty basically and so the, the the I used it the top bedrooms the the bedrooms on the top floor as my closet and I had all these clothing racks and shoe racks and stuff like that in there and then it had another level the mezzanine which is an over you know it hung over the rest of the bottom floor uh, and I used that as my office and the bottom floor is of course the living room with just some sparsely decorated just some big couches and in a low table. And I um, go on to, I hear him in um, Penthouse 5. Uh, and, oh, on the lower level also is another painting studio, like painting area of mine. So I go in there because I hear him and he's screaming, but I don't know why, I don't know who he's, I, I, my, my understanding was he was screaming at me, but I wasn't in that apartment. I could hear him, and when I heard him, uh, I, I came into the into Penthouse Five, and I have to go down the stairs, and and I went down the stairs to the mezzanine level where my office was, and I could see him and uh, a security guard and Debbie, um, the nurse, and um, he was sitting on the on the sofa um, at when I first walked into the room, and he kind of stood up, he was drinking a um, Red Bull and screaming at me. And uh, Debbie came up the stairs because I'm screaming back at him. She came up the stairs, I think. And while we were, she came up, I, I, I'm supposed to kind of comfort me. And while I was up on the mezzanine floor, Whitney came down and um, he threw the 
Red Bull can up at me, certainly, but it kind of either hit or narrowly missed Debbie. Um, and I said he, I called him a pussy and, and said something about, you know, I'm screaming at him angrily. Um, I, I, I at least called him a, a fucking pussy. I, I don't know what else I said, but I was screaming at him because he threw this can at me and everything else that had happened. And when I did that, he bolted up the stairs. <laughs> and, you know, there's only, I mean, he, he, was up, he was up the first flight of stairs. Again, I'm on the mezzanine, which is in between two flights of stairs. Bolted up the steps. Um, and I, I, I don't know, I don't know how he managed to get his hand in my hair so fast, but he had his um, hand on the back of my, my head, my hair, and kind of was yanking me down and um, hit me in the face with this cast he had. Um, I just remember this, this brief struggle we had before kind of break away Whitney, my sister, um, all of a sudden put herself in between Johnny and I. Uh, she just threw herself like in the line of fire or whatever. She just all of a sudden was there and was trying to get Johnny to stop. Um, her back was to the staircase and Johnny swings at her and I just see my little sister with her back on, face, her back to the staircase and Johnny swings at her and I don't even wait, don't even wait for any other, I don't hesitate, I don't wait, I just, in my head, instantly think of Kate Moss and the stairs, and I swung at him. And all of my relationship to date with Johnny, I hadn't landed a blow. And I, for the first time, hit him, like actually hit him, square in the face. He didn't push my sister down the stairs. And all of my time, all my time of being in that relationship to that point <sighs> hadn't even landed one on Johnny. Sure, I had tried to fight back, threw my arms, flailed my arms, hit whenever I, I could to try to block blows myself, but never landed anything. And Johnny kind of looked stunned and then laughed at me and then lunged at me again. And before I know it, uh, security stepped in between us and, 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 and pulled Johnny away. Uh, and I went upstairs with my sister and um, we locked the, the, the door and I could just hear all this commotion happening in Penthouse Five. I could hear him raging, destroying my things. I could hear it. Um, and at some point I saw it the next day Tell the jury what you saw the next day. Um, what? Um, all these clothing racks, all my clothing racks were toppled over, shoe racks toppled over, thrown down the stairs. Um, desk, uh, everything on my desk wiped off. Uh, just it looked like everything that he could touch, he tried to turn over, destroy, smash, you know. Uh, but my clothing racks, these huge, heavy clothing racks full of clothes. Uh, there was at least one of them he, he threw down the stairs. The rest were toppled over. Amber, I'm going to fast forward to December 15, 2015. Um, were you and Mr. Depp together at that time? Yes, we were. Did did you have a fight that night? Uh, December 15th, yes, we did, but I, I don't recall. I don't recall what started the argument. 
we had had periods leading up to that that were really beautiful and really good, and then periods that weren't. Well, let's talk about the December 15, 2015. What do you recall of your fight that night with Mr. Depp? I remember him chasing me in the kitchen. I remember throwing something in his direction to slow down his momentum. I remember him screaming. Um, I remember uh, him getting on top of me at some point, um, toppling me. Um, mostly at that moment downstairs, he was hitting me in my face. Again, this is another example of when I wish so much I could tell you an exact sequence, but I can't. It's flashes. Um, so I'll tell you what I do remember. I remember <clears throat> at some point um, trying to go flee upstairs, and we had um, he, he got a hold of me and I got free, and I managed to get all the way up the stairs almost. Um, I was on the last flight, and um, we had had some interaction where I, I, I said, I think I said something to him on the stairs. There, it it might have been broken up, and I think I said something on the stairs, and it, I just remember how quickly he shot back up those stairs and um, grabbed me by the back of my hair, my head, and slammed his um, his hand on my head. And I went down on the stairs, and uh, he overtook me. Uh, I remember him so well. Uh, I remember his boots and the sound they made. I remember him grabbing my my hair, my head, and kind of dragging me up the stairs the rest of the rest of the way. He dragged me into the the room that that those stairs open into. It's uh, like a salon foyer area. And we had this argument that kind of, you know, was a shoving match that I was losing. Um, by the second or third shove, he sent me um, toppling over this uh, chaise lounge, like a little low-lying sofa seat. And I um, hit my head on the, on the brick. Uh, wall. It was a, there was an exposed brick wall. Uh, I remember I stood up and I remember Johnny um, asking me if I wanted to go. And he did that thing where he's like, challenge, like challenging me, he said it in that way, challenging me to stand up and get back up. And when I did, he said, oh, you really want to go now, tough guy? Shove me back down. Oh, you really want to go, huh? Oh, you're so tough. I stood back up again. This time he hits me in the face. I stand back up and look him right in the eyes. And it was just a really still moment. I'll never forget it. Really still. I stood up and he said, you want to go again, tough guy? And I just looked right at him. Just looked right at his face. And he balled up his fists, leaned back, and headbutted me square in the nose. Just right as I stood in front of him. I, I was a foot from him. Slammed me right in the nose, instantly, sear, I, searing pain. It's one of the few memories I have in this long relationship that I actually remember the, the, like, the physical pain in that moment, you know, just searing. And... I remember thinking, you you have your hands free. You know, like, I, I, I had time to think. You have your hands free. You could have hit me with your hands. Why did you headbutt me? I, t I told him that night I was going to leave him. I went through his office to go into the other room where I kept all my stuff. Um, we had another um, struggle. He overtook me. Um, I was trying to hit him off me. I was trying to get him to 
get it, he was trying to get his body off of me, and he was just pummeling me. I don't know how else to describe what I was. Um, I went down to the floor. I remember being on top of me, and he's screaming and swinging at me while I was on the floor. Uh, he had me by the hair and dragged me the rest of the way from the office into the neighboring uh, room, the neighboring apartment. I remember um, this, the door that connected these two, build, the, these two rooms had a, a metal uh, grate, not a grate, but a metal bottom, metal floor that separated it. It's a big, heavy bank door. And I remember he was dragging me, and I m removed my hands from my um, head and kind of tried to grab onto the metal door uh, to prevent him from dragging me into the room. But he, I, 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 I couldn't stop him. He dragged me all the way from that carpet. I was, I was trying to ex, I was trying to get free of his grasp. I was trying to stop him from pulling me. I remember feeling the carpet and the metal. Um, and he wrestles me, drags me up to the bed throws me down onto the bed. It kind of wrestles me down onto the bed. And he kneels on my uh, back with one, one leg. And I was trying to fight him off me because uh, I was face down on the bed top. And he wrestled me down, kind of trying to hold me down with his knee on my back. And... He's punching me, punching me, with a close fist, punching me repeatedly. And I, I don't remember even feeling the pain. I just remember the sound of Johnny's voice. He got next to my ear, and he was screaming over and over and over again. Each time it sounded louder and more desperate. I fucking hate you. I fucking hate you. I fucking hate you, over and over, fucking hate you. And then pounding the back of my head, pounding it with his fist. And I don't even remember feeling pain. I just could hear myself scream until I couldn't hear myself anymore. I could just hear him say that he was going to kill me and that he sounded like an animal in pain when he was saying he was, that he fucking hated me. He sounded like he was almost crying or something in his voice was different. He sounded different, like he sounded like he was in agony. He was high pitched and loud. And I don't know how many times he just hit me over and over and over again. And I got really still and it, felt in my body like quiet. And I thought, this is how I die. He's gonna kill me now. And I'm not, you're gonna kill me and you won't even have realized it. I couldn't breathe. I remember trying to scream and I couldn't scream. I was suffocating in this pillow top with him holding me down, punching me over and over. And I don't have any memory after that until I woke up. When you woke up, was there anyone there? I remember hearing my best friend's voice 
felt like it came, um, felt like it was like on a speakerphone, like it came from everywhere. I just heard her voice in a weird way. It felt like it was coming from two directions. And I realized that I was sitting on the edge of the bed on the carpet of the floor against the the broken frame of the bed. And there was a low-lying bed um, with a really thick wooden uh, frame. And uh, it was broken from his boot trying to get a purchase on it while he was... Objection, Your Honor, calls for speculation. I could feel it. Overall. Thank you. Please continue. I was there for it. Um, and while he was on top of me, I could feel that. I could feel him trying to get balance. I could feel him slipping. I could hear it. I don't know how I got off the bed. I don't know what happened to me from the time I was, I stopped hearing myself scream. I don't know what happened to me. It's a really weird feeling because I, next thing I remember is laying, leaning against the broken part of the bed and on the carpet and I, my friend saying, oh my God, oh Objection, my God. Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay. Sustained. Okay. Go ahead. And without and then I, what Rocky said. Okay. I, I, I eventually, um, she called uh, the nurse, Nurse Erin. Um, she got something out of the freezer for my face. She did a concussion check with Erin on the phone. Um, I, 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 I thought I probably had a concussion and certainly thought I had a broken nose. There was blood everywhere, blood all over those pillows. Um, my head was bleeding from the ripped out hair, chunks of hair on the floor all over the place, actually. It was just all over the apartment. He, he after leaving me, had written on the countertops in Sharpies, Michelle, I'm going to ask you to bring up Defendant's Exhibit 510. Do you recognize this photograph? Yes, I do. Um, and does it accurately depict the scene portrayed? Yes, that's um, the next day, I think. Your Honor, I'm going to move the admission of Defendant's Exhibit 510. No objection. All right, 510 in evidence. You may publish it, please. Thank you. And could you describe to the jury what that is? It was um, chunks of my hair that Johnny ripped out while dragging me uh, and punching me. Thank you. Michelle, could you bring up 513, please? Defendants 513. Does this picture accurately depict you and in, in, in the scene portrayed? I think this is a couple days later, but yeah. Okay. I'm going to move the admission of defendants 513. No objection. All right, 513 in evidence. And could you tell the jury what this is and what it depicts? This is um, my face um, with um, a busted lip, which it's difficult to see in this picture, but um, my two black eyes, one is worse than the other. Uh, I, like I said, maybe a day or two later. Um, and uh, my broken nose. All right, thank you. Michelle, can you bring up Defendant's Exhibit 514?
does this accurately portray the scene depicted? Um, yes, that's my face uh, sometime after. Your Honor, I'm going to move the admission of defendants 514. No objection. 514, that in progress. All right, if you could just briefly describe for the jury what this one is. Um, that's my face. Uh, some time after um, when Johnny beat me up. Thank you. Michelle, if you could bring up defendants 515. this accurately portray the scene depicted? Yes. I'm going to move the admission of Exhibit 516. No objection. 515 or 516? Uh, 516. I'm sorry if I misspoke. You said 515 oh, before. It's 515. 515. No objection to 515? Okay. No, 515 in evidence. No objection. And what does this depict, Amber? Could you tell the jury? Uh, this is my face uh, sometime after. All right. Uh, let's look at defendants 516, please. Does this accurately portray the scene depicted? Amber? Yes, it does. This like is maybe. Wait, wait. Let me let me move it first. May I, I move sure. the admission of Defendant's Exhibit Five Sixteen? No objection. Five Sixteen in evidence. Published to the jury, please. Okay, Amber, go ahead and explain what it is. I think this is um, maybe the that night or the next night after um, Johnny left me on the bed. Let's go to 517. Does this accurately portray the scene depicted? Yes, it does. Move to admit defendants 517, Your Honor. No objection. 517 in evidence. Amber, please describe for the jury what this portrays. Um, that's my face after this incident. And what is what's portrayed on your lip? Um, well, he busted my lip when he punched me. It's bleeding in this picture. It kept reopening. You know, it's a mouth. Your lips move. Let's go to 519. Does this accurately portray the scene depicted? Yes. Move yes. the admission of 519. No objection, Your Honor. 519 in evidence. And tell the jury what this shows. Uh, this is my lip a few days later. Let's go to defendants 520, please. Does this accurately depict the scene portrayed? Yes. Move the admission of defendants 520. Is it 521 or 520? 520. No objection. 520 in evidence. Published. Can you please tell the jury what's depicted here? That's my scalp with a chunk of it missing from when Johnny was dragging me by my hair. Defendants 521, please. Mm. I don't 
I think that's the same. Let's take that one down. Let's go to 522. Does this uh, accurately portray the scene depicted? Well, it's a few days later. Okay. Move the admission of 522, please. No objection. 522 in evidence. And what shows there? Uh, my face is healing. Okay. Let's go to 523. Does this accurately portray the scene depicted? Yes, I think this is day or so after, maybe maybe longer. I can't okay. tell, but yes, it does. Move the admission of 523. No objection. 523 and I'm just going to draw your attention, Amber, to an area up here. What, if any, uh, bruising did you sustain in that area? Objection leading. What, if any? Uh, I'll sustain the objection. Okay. Um, it's what, if any, uh, bruising did you sustain? I, same sorry. objection. I'll sustain the objection. Did, did, did you have... What injuries did you have? I had bruising on my temple, my chin, um, the my neck, the back of my head. I had um, swelling and pieces of, you know, my scalp kind of ripped, torn, they were gross, pussy. But this is of um, the bruising around my temple um, from one of the blows, one, several of the blows, I don't know. Let's go to 524. Does this accurately portray the scene shown? Yes. Okay. Move the admission of 524. No objection. 524 in evidence. And what does this show? It's, um, I had a pretty... Can I touch the screen? Yes. Yes, yes ma'am, you can. Yes. And I had a pretty um, gross bruise right there in my, my head. On my temple. It's difficult to see it in this light, but I remember it was pretty ugly. Now let's go to Defendant's 509. Does this accurately portray the scene depicted? Yes, it does. Your Honor, I move the admission of defendants 509. No objection. All right, 509. Will you please tell the jury what this is? That's the bed that Johnny broke while on top of me. Let's go to defendants 511, please. Does this accurately portray the scene depicted? Yes. Okay. Move the admission of defendants 511. No objection. All right, 511 in evidence. What do you see in this picture, Amber? Um, just more destruction from a part of the fight that happened in the bedroom. Not the bedroom that I was um, just talking about. <clears throat> that was uh, uh, the main bedroom. There had been a, a part of the fight that happened in there too. 
Go to Defendants 512, please. Does this accurately portray the scene depicted? Yes, um, that's downstairs in the main. Right, let me let me move the admission of it. Move the admission of defendants 512, please. No objection. 512 in evidence. Okay, now please tell the jury about it. It's uh, downstairs in the main apartment. Okay. Let's go to defendants 525. And does this accurately depict the scene portrayed? Yes. Move the admission of 525, please. No objection. All right, 525 in evidence. And please tell the jury what this is. This is um, Johnny's graffitiing on our kitchen counter um, that he left up when he, on his way out, I suppose. And I think defendants 526 is already in the evidence. Could you just bring that yes, up? 526 is in the evidence. Sorry. All right. Now, Amber, after, as of December 15, 2015, um, what were your plans for Christmas that year? Well, uh, up to this point, the plan was to have our families join us. We would go with the kids and celebrate Christmas together, you know, as a married couple. And we would all go to Johnny's Island. And he had invited my best friend uh, at the time, Rocky, and her family, meaning her mom and her fiance, and uh, my parents and my sister, and I, I, we were all gonna go to this island I've told you about um, that Johnny has in the Bahamas and spend it together. And that was a plan leading up to this. And what if anything changed as a result of this night of December 15, 2015? Uh, after after they saw my face, no one wanted to go to the island anymore with Johnny. They wanted me to leave him. Did um, you have to appear, were you scheduled to appear on the James Corden show on December 16? That's right, I was um, promoting The Danish Girl, the film I had done earlier in the year in London before going to see Johnny in Australia. Uh, so I was promoting that film that had been completed, and they asked me to make an appearance on a, a night show called The James Corden Show. After this happened, uh, and I did the first concussion check with Aaron on the phone, uh, I got worried that I wouldn't be able to uh, hide the bruising and swelling. Um, but I uh, iced it all night, and the next day um, checked in the mirror to see if I could get away with it, meaning hiding it, so I could make an appearance. And uh, I, I gambled and thought maybe I could pull it off. Uh, I had my hair and makeup team come, and they worked around it meaning worked around the lesions on my head with the hairspray because that stings um, and worked around the, the bruising by covering it um, with heavy makeup, heavier makeup than normal bruise covering makeup. And uh, I remember my lip was still bleeding and swollen, so we did this like really thick, super heavy, matte, red lipstick. And I remember very well at the time that we had no choice in color, and that was a, a, 
uh, one of my favorite colors to wear. And I told people I had an accident. Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. Sustained it's objection. not offered to prove the truth of the matter, but uh, sustained Because you didn't have an accident. But Your Honor. All right. I'll sustain the objection. Okay. Please continue. So did you appear on the show? I appeared on the show. Okay. And did there come a time that you uh, changed your mind and went to the Bahamas with Mr. Depp for Christmas? Eventually. Eventually I did. Okay. And uh, you went there with whom? Uh, I, I went with Johnny's kids. Um, I was, um, you know, obviously I didn't see Johnny after this because he doesn't, he didn't uh, face the damage he caused in my experience. Uh, he was never around for the cleanups. And uh, so he wasn't around for a few days. And I... Eventually heard from him, and he said he wanted to talk. And then he understood that it couldn't go back, you know, like almost as if he understood that I wouldn't forgive him. Made it easier somehow to talk to him. You know, I didn't feel so bad about myself in that case because, you know, how could I put up with this, right? But with the understanding that we were done, I could, you know, allow for us to have one last conversation, I suppose. But I just, you know, it's like, um, I was heartbroken by the idea that I would spend this, my first Christmas as a married couple with his kids and everything on the island. I, I was heartbroken at the idea of missing that. And, you know, it's the best I can describe it is it's like um, for every, every hit, every instance of violence, every time I was choked, every single one of these instances was like a heavy coin put into a piggy bank and you know you you think okay well each single one of these is like objection your honor non-responsive uh, I think it's responsive your honor it, the question was with doing, whom did you go if, if we could ask the question uh, how, how, tell us how you felt and what you were thinking in this process of whether to go to have Christmas with Mr. Depp and his children no, I, I guess I was trying to explain. Go um, ahead. Go ahead. That you know, it just after you think each one of these is. Um, it's almost like you, for each one of these things that happens, you lose the will, or resolve to leave. You know, it's like every single. Heavy coin you put in this piggy bank is like an investment into the, future you're going to get to, you know, and then, before you know it. You're just carrying around this weighted ball. This piggy bank's too heavy, you can't leave. You know, for every single time I went back or allowed him back, after this sort of thing would happen, I lost a piece of my self, a piece of my self-confidence, my trust in myself to leave and move on. You know, this, I lost the fortifications, I lost myself, and it was somehow easier to stay. I didn't want to stay in the violence or in this. I wanted to stay with Johnny, the good Johnny that I loved. So I like put another one of those coins in the piggy bank of investment and hope and future and I forgive him. Not, it wasn't even that simple. I just decided to believe him that it would never happen again. Clean and sober once again. This time was the last time because it couldn't be worse than this, right? It couldn't be worse. And part of me thought well, maybe it just needed to get this bad 
to get, you know, like now we can't go back. That There's no way this could happen again. So I, I went to the island after a few days of talking with Johnny, arguing with Johnny, talking with Johnny, negotiating that he was going to be clean and sober. I wasn't going to drink anymore. He wasn't going to use anymore. He'd never lay a hand on me again. He'd rather die than do that, is what he was saying. And I was scared. My friends were scared, but I decided to go. After a few days of having the plane and the kids waiting, not knowing what was going on, they were at Sweetser, the main house, kind of just waiting to go on this Christmas vacation. And eventually um, I, I got in the car with Johnny. And we picked his kids up and left for the island. So let's, let's go to the island for the Christmas holidays. And what, if any, uh, arguments did you have with Mr. Depp? at the island over the Christmas holiday? Um, towards the end of the trip. It was, I mean, the trip itself was pretty nice, but towards the end, he started drinking again, and started with wine, and um, we were on the couch uh, in the main house, a cabin, it's like a one-room kind of cabin, and uh, we were sitting on the couch, and Johnny, what, what I perceived as nodding off, I don't still know what it was, but he was kind of passing out or nodding off or something like that. And I'm sensitive at this point to the clues that I can pick up on to know what pattern of behavior I'm dealing with because they made a, a huge difference in my life. So if I knew what he was on and what he was doing, I could react accordingly. So I'm picking up clues. I'm sitting next to him, and he's nodding off. And every single time he kind of, like, nods off, he, he dumps this glass of wine on my lap. And I say every single time because it happened like three times. First time, whatever. Second time, I'm like, Johnny, are you all right? And I probably say it, like, a little weighted. And in my head, I'm just wondering what he's on. Is this? Does this mean he's on the Roxy's again? Is this... Like, is it nodding off? What's going on? What am I going to deal with? He just had promised that it was clean and sober. We had had this horrible thing happen in December. I thought we were moving forward. And the third time this happens, I jump up. I already changed my pants twice. And um, I jumped up and I um, shout at Johnny, like, you know, what are you doing? Or Johnny... Just pull on me again, something to that effect. And I get up, I got, um, get up off the couch, and uh, Johnny's son says, Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. Your Honor, not offered to prove the truth of the matter. It tells, it explains what's, well, what's coming. Well, if you could approach, I just don't know. Amber, please continue. Jack said. It says, um, are you okay or can I help? Something to that effect. And I pointedly say to Jack, but really to Johnny, like, thank you, Jack. And to make a point of the fact that he hadn't offered to help me or even acknowledge that he'd been spilling wine. First, he's drinking wine. Second, he's spilling it all over me. And third, he's Spilling it because he's nodding off is what I assume. So I 
kind of say this in a pointed way at Jack, thanking him f for offering. And I get up, go to the closet, take off the pants that have just been ruined. And um, Johnny comes into the closet right after me and slams me up against the side of the, the closet. And in, uh, I mean, just with clarity, with my, holding, while holding my neck, he said he'd fucking kill me if I ever spoke to him like that in front of his kids again, if I ever embarrass him. And he just shoved me in, embarrassed. If I ever embarrass you, if, I, if, if you ever embarrass me again in front of my kids, I'll fucking kill you. And I don't know, I don't recall um, who told Jack to leave or it, I, I don't really recall having an awareness um, of where he was at this point, but I leave the closet um, go into the bathroom, which is right next to it. And he comes barreling into the bathroom behind me. Um, uh, before he does that, I said something snarky to him fucking ever talk to me like that again or I hate you or something in response, you know, just something so that I felt like I wasn't just being a punching bag and I kind of like get over to the bathroom but I didn't even have the door shut before he was in the bathroom with me. And I don't know if he used my body um, to shut the door or or if he just shut it, but um, again, bangs me up against the wall. But this time he just, just grabbed my uh, vagina, like, I was wearing this um, peach, um, kind of like netted kind of style swimming suit underneath. That's that. That's what I had on uh, from the waist down, and he just grabbed me. Best I can explain it with his um, shoved, shoved his um, fingers and inside me, but through my bathing suit. He didn't like move my bathing suit out of the way, and just kind of held me there. And asked me if I was so fucking tough. If I thought I was so fucking tough. I said, oh, you tough like a man now? Are you some man now? Just kind of taunting me while jerking me around. And he kind of seemed to do this thing where he was smiling. Not, it's like teasing me. You know, like, oh yeah, you think you're so fucking tough now? What? Now what? I um I don't know what happened after that. I went I went back into the room or he went into the room. I don't know who went into the main room first. Um I just remember um his hand landing on the back of my shoulder neck area. I remember trying to get him off of me. Um I don't know I, I, I don't know what the next thing that happened was, but I do remember I knew I needed to get away from him. At some point, I ran. Uh, I ran out of the back door, ran out onto the patio. Um, at some point before I ran, um, he swung at me, but I don't, I don't even remember how much of an impact it meant, uh, land, met, uh, made, but I remember running. Um, I threw something at his, in his direction um, when I was getting away from him. Uh, I ran down the deck, uh, ran out into the kind of like parking lot area, this gravel parking lot area outside of the house. And that's my estimation of when Johnny reached me, um, grabbed me by the hair, swung me around. 
Um, I remember he hit my face at least once, but I'm not quite sure in what sequence. Was it before I broke away or after? I don't remember. I just remember the lights of the ATV coming up. Um, the island, you know, two of the people who worked on the island for Johnny, um, CJ and Tara, they pulled up in the um, ATV. I remember the headlights. I remember separating from him. Uh, or that them kind of running up and saying something and separating us. And, uh, and, and I didn't see Johnny for the rest of the evening is my recollection. I just found him the next day, um, passed out in the cafe that was close to the house. Is that the end of? Yeah, this, this is a good breaking point. Yes. All right. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, you can just stay there for a moment. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be breaking again. This is the time that we break for a week. Okay, so I won't be seeing you until May sixteenth. But I wanted to talk to you a little bit about how the remainder of the case will progress. Okay. All right. So um, uh, we promised to get to the case to you by Memorial Day. So uh, in order to keep that promise, there's going to be a few things I need from you, okay? One thing is starting on May 16th, we're going to start having court at 9 a.m. So we'll be going 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Some days we might have to go to 5.30, so I want to let you know ahead of time so you can plan accordingly, okay? The other thing I need from you is Friday, May 27th, which is the, the Friday before Memorial Day, is going to be a, a court day. Uh, on that day, we're going to go ahead and have closing arguments, and the case is going to be turned over to you for deliberations on that day, okay? So, I, again, I wanted to let you know ahead of time so you can plan accordingly so we can get this uh, taken care of for you, okay? All right, so those are the announcements I want to make for you and make sure uh, you had time to uh, schedule what you needed to do. Um, now, I also want to um, go over, uh, as we always do on Thursdays, um, our responsibilities, uh, the responsibilities you have as jurors, okay, in this case? All right, so you're not to read anything about this case. You're not to watch anything about this case. You're not to listen to anything about this case. This applies to television, newspapers, magazines, the Internet, and any online sites. Further, you're not to read, watch, or listen to anything about this case on any social networking sites, such as Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, et cetera, or any similar sites. In addition, you must not communicate with anyone about the case, whether in person, over the phone, by email, text, or instant messaging, or by any other electronic or non-electronic means. This includes friends, family, coworkers, acquaintances, and strangers. I also instruct you that you cannot do any research or make any inquiries about this case, whether online or by any other means. What you learn about this case is limited to what you learn in the four walls of this courtroom uh, when proceedings are underway, okay? So please enjoy uh, your week off, get plenty of fresh air and rest, all right? And then I'll see you at 9 a.m. on Monday, May 16th, okay? All right, thank you.